Hi, I'm Matt. And I'm Dave. And in this Magento Basics tutorial, you're going to learn how to use the Chrome Document Inspector to change CSS values. That's right. Now, a little heads up, this one's going to be a little bit nerdy, and I'm also going to assume that you have a basic understanding of what CSS is and some of the attributes which you can use to change or change the style sheets on your Magento website. If you've got no idea what CSS is, just open up Google, type in CSS tutorial, and there's some fantastic tutorials out there and they'll walk you through step by step. So my point here is, is that I am making the assumption that you've got a good idea what CSS is and you just want to learn a little bit more on how to make live changes to your Magento website when like a safe environment, Dave, before applying them into maybe your custom.css file if you're using the ultimate theme like we've got over on Understand an E. Now, Matt, I'm guessing that we also assume that they're using Google Chrome, but does this also apply to a Firefox extension too? Yeah, so I would strongly suggest using Google Chrome. Number one, the web browser is an awful lot faster than Firefox, but you could be using something like Firebug in Firefox, which is just a free extension, just Google Firebug for Firefox and you just install it and just restart the browser and off you go. And also if you're using Internet Explorer, you can press F12 on your keyboard. But there is a note here is that it's much, much easier to use Google Chrome, especially for changing values on there. And you're going to find out why in a few moments time, because you have this source tab, which you can use to your advantage. So you can pre-write some CSS paste it into the page, and then you'll see the changes live back on your Magento website. By the way, only you see these changes. That's the point worth noting here. Your customers won't see those changes until you go and add them to one of your CSS files on your Magento website. So Dave, if there's anything which you don't get during this tutorial, please just ask. I'm relying on you on this one <laughs> for it. And again, I'll do the best I can. So with that said, we're going to jump across to our Magento website. We're going to pick up on a couple of key areas, such as the price and the availability tags or HTML on our page. And we're going to go install those. The principles which you're about to learn can be applied to any other section of any website. It doesn't have to be Magento. It can be done on any website and you can do this on eBay if you wanted to. Just grab the eBay page view source and you can change the way which eBay looks. You can do the same for Facebook as well. But that said, ultimately for those changes to be permanent, you would have to add them to your own CSS file for your own website. With that said, let's jump over to Magento and we'll see you there in a few moments time. Okay, Dave, I've been a come across to a product page on our Magento website. And if I just scroll down a second, okay, we're going to focus upon this availability in stock. Okay, and we're going to go and change the text color of in stock. Now, I have got no idea what the CSS I need to do this is just yet. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to highlight the area which I'm after. I can get it right on my screen. So in stock, I'm going to right click and then I'm going to choose this special option called inspect element. I know that my document inspector is going to pop open in a new window. Now, that may not be the case for you and you may have it appear on the right hand side of your screen or down here at the bottom. Now, if you wanted to get this out into a full window, OK, see these little double screen icon on the right hand side here, Dave? Yep. OK, so I'll move my mouse off it and just highlight it for you is the trick to that is just left click and hold your mouse on it and then let go and it will pop up in a new window. And it's much easier to use in a new window, especially if you've got two or more monitors. But for this tutorial, I'm going to lock it back down at the bottom. It just makes it a little bit easier for you to see the live changes side by side. Now, you can start any element you want using the document inspector. So let's just get ourselves acquainted. So in this top panel up here, Dave, this is where we've got the live view of our Magento website. And any changes which we make using any of the tabs down here will impact the page above. We've got the elements tab. Now this is just like viewing the source of the web page, but it's actually after any jQuery has been applied. Okay, so after the scroller has been applied to the related items widget on the right hand side. 
We've got a tab called Network, which is fantastic, especially in interrogating Ajax calls and things like that. I know it is a little bit nerdy. We've got the Sources tab, which we will be spending a lot of time on in this tutorial. We've also got the Timeline, which is great for finding out what's happening with the timeline as the page loads on here. We've got Profiles, which, to be frankly honest, I've rarely used. We've got resources. So resources could be cookies, it could be images and things like that. Oh, and also any iframes which are running on the page. Audits, if I'm frankly honest, I have never used. The console, now as a developer, I use the console a lot to check JavaScript. Now that's not really the topic of this tutorial, so I'm gonna skip over. Now I do have one extra tab in here, which is called page speed, and that's an add-on for Chrome, just type in Google Chrome page speed extension. It's a free extension and you can analyze your page and get suggestions back from Google. Okay, so that's a quick introduction to these tabs. But like I said, we are gonna be focusing our attention based upon the sources tab and the elements tab. So let's go back to elements. Now, we highlighted the in stock and I right clicked and chose inspect element and it's taken us to the right node within our document object model or DOM or the simple way of explaining this within the HTML of your website. Now if we wanted to style that span just there we could then click on the plus button on the right hand side and you see it says on there new style rule. Yep. Click on new style rule and it's got span but Dave this one's already posed a problem. The reason being is that's just a HTML tag. And if we apply any styles to this, it's gonna to apply to every single span tag on our Magento website. And this is where Google Chrome and the document inspector comes in really, really handy because if I was to start typing in here, something like color, and again, I'm just gonna cheat. And by the way, I just typed in CO and then pressed the tab key on my keyboard. Now we can either choose from a prefix color or I'm gonna try and change mine to some wild color, like so. And let me just click off there a mo. Ah, uh, look, can you see it's changed the span tag? The colors have changed too much. Okay, this is the great thing about this is because you'll go in here and you maybe change the color. And by the way, that's a big tip for you. It's the best place for you to start is start by forcing a color onto the area which you want to change. And then you know that you've got the right section. And you also know like, oops, I've picked up that span tag. And oops, I've picked up that span tag above. And again, this is where I'm gonna assume that you have some knowledge of CSS. And Dave, the best way of explaining how to, to write some good CSS is to be as authoritative as possible, but in the minimum amount as possible as well. Now, this will make more sense now. So we've got the span tag, but if we look back up, okay, we've got a P tag and it's got the class of availability and it's also got a second class of in stock. And above there, we've got another class called product type data. So let's start off with a very simple one. So I'm just gonna double click in there, it's highlighted that. And then I'm gonna press Control C on my keyboard. So I've been and copied that. Let's go back down to our span tag. So we've still got the custom one, which we added here. If I double click in there and I'm going to type in dot, which means a class, space and span, and then click off. Ah, did you see those two went from yellow now back to their original colors? And we've only attacked that one now or amended that one. Now, the thing is, is that this will now work within that class in there. But can you see that I've got an extra class in here called in stock? That tells me that Magento has been put in stock on this but there might have be an out of stock class as well. Again, I'm not gonna do this right now, but if you did want to change the color of this element, then you would wanna go and find a test product in your Magento website, put it out of stock, and then look out, see what the CSS class changes to. But that goes off on a bit of a tangent, so let's remain on topic. Now, the other bit which I wanna show you is that, can you see on the right-hand side, it says inspector hyphen style sheet, and then one on the end. That number one means row one or line one. Okay, and that's important to remember because if we look down here, we've got styles.css. And if I hover on that, can you see what it's saying there for a path? It's telling me the style sheet, which is applying to this element, is guides.understandinge.com forward slash setup forward slash front end ultimate default CSS styles. And then 
it's on line four. Same for this one down here, the common. If I hover my mouse on there, and again, if you ever need to find out, oh, where is that style to? You just hover on that link, and it's that one there is in the common.css file on line 233. So if you went in and opened up that file, go down to line 233, and to there, you'll then find that you've got color and then hash AAA in our case. Now, when we add live styles or temporary styles in our web browser, or especially using Chrome, is that if you then click on that link which says inspector hyphen style sheet, if I click on here, can you see that we've now come across to the sources tab and now we've got the code, which we had a few moments ago. Yep. We don't have any of the nice prompts, which we had a few moments ago, but we can also write in and add in our own CSS. So maybe I wanted to pop a border around that. So one pix, solid. And again, I'm actually in two minds whether this is actually gonna work on a span tag. Oh, it is working. There you go, red. So I've now been in added a border around that section there of one pixel solid and then it's red and of course I could also do dashed and it's put a dashed around it. Okay, so this is how I prefer to work is using the sources tab, pick up one element, click on the plus button, just put something in there and then go straight to the inspector style sheet. That's the way which I work. But that said, the right hand side for the styles is actually really handy. The reason being is because there's extra features in here. So if I click on that color icon, you can choose your own color on the right hand side and see it's given us the hex code on the right hand side. So if I now wanted that CSS to go and put into our own sheet, we could either highlight that section, which I do find a little bit dodgy at times, or you could click on inspector style sheet, go in here, look, it's changed the color code, highlight that, right click, copy, and then I can go and add that to our own custom style sheet. Now, Dave, I did say about this authority or ordering process. We saw that in use here. Remember, when we had the span tag just by itself is that everything got changed color. And then when we put the extra class in front of it, let me just scroll back down, it changed it to the one area which we're after. Now, there are some funky features when it comes to CSS is sometimes you need to force the color to be applied to that section or another style, okay? And to do that, whatever the end of your tag is, okay, press space, go exclamation mark, important. And that basically tells the web browser you should really take notice of that. So that's kind of like your last resort for applying styles. What is much better to do, okay, especially if you're working with complex websites like Magento, for example, where there are lots and lots of CSS files, is to be more specific in addressing that element. So if I go back to our elements here on the left-hand side, can you see that we said product type data? So there's our class. That's what the full stop product type data means, class. And then we said that the span changed the color to blue and give it a little red border. If we wanted to make sure this happens for all of our product pages, we scroll back up and I'm looking up for the top there, body class. So up at the top, we can see that we've got the class catalog product view. Okay, now that's gonna be a class which is only applied to the product pages within Magento. And again, I'm not gonna use the right-hand side anymore. I'm gonna use the sources tab. Okay, and that was a class, not an ID. If it was an ID, we'd have to put the hash symbol in front of it. Again, this is one, probably need to, at least a basic understanding of CSS. And you'll see now that we've got three rules in here, one rule, but it's on three levels. So it's saying only work on the pages which have catalog hyphen product hyphen view. So that's product pages in Magento. Then only within the section called product type data, and then only for span tags. Again, if you, especially you've got two rules trying to say the same thing and your new rule might not take effect, the easiest way of doing that, rather than writing important on the end, which is like I mentioned this last case scenario, is to go up a level, be more specific in what you're doing. And probably one of the quickest, one of the easiest ways of doing that is to go to the elements tab, scroll up to the top of the page and look for the body in there and then pick off one of the classes off the top and then use that as a reference because it's unlikely in like the theme called Ultimo, for example, is that that's gonna have such a specific CSS tag in there. So Dave, that's a very basic introduction. 
into using the Chrome document inspector and changing CSS on Magento. I am just going to point out just one other thing for you as well is that let's go back to that tag which we're entering now. I'm just going to right click on what we were editing, inspect element. Now this is where I don't know and I don't even pretend to know all the possible options for all these lots and lots of style tags or attributes which you can apply within and using CSS. But if you roughly know the name on there, so like when I typed in color a moment ago, so I typed in CO and can you see it's given me all these different options in here? So I find the one which I just get half right and then press tab. And again, Chrome is helping me by giving me a defined <laughs> set of colors. You could also have font. Now, sometimes I forget with font weights, for example, or font sizes. So I type in font, so I'm on the right lines. Oh, font size. And then it's giving me some suggestions. Now I could also enter a specific value, 13 picks, or let's just make this 23 picks, or it really does blow up. There we go. Ooh. It's just gone huge, all right? and font weights and again if you've got fat fingers like myself sometimes get the e and the i rang the wrong way round just type in font i've just used the arrows keys on my keyboard to go down and look can you see it's given me the different options yep. in here so if i want to make it bold i can click okay click off and it will go to bold yeah happy days really straightforward to do and yeah just go through have a play and of course once you're happy with the css which you've been in changed Click on the link which says Inspector Style Sheets. It will take you across to the Sources tab. And by the way, once you've visited that sheet once before, you can just flick between the Elements and the Sources tab. Grab, and again, I'm assuming that you're happy with the changes which we made here. Grab that section, right click, copy. Again, I'm assuming that you're using the Ultimo theme. So go and open up your custom.css file, paste the changes in right at the bottom of the sheet, and they'll then get applied to your Magento website. Of course, you hit save and then clear out your caches and so on and so forth. But that's the basic principle. So that's a slightly deeper look at the console. That's as far as I think I'm gonna go with this tutorial because CSS, you can change any element on this page. And we hope that gives you a little deeper insight into what you can do with the document inspector with Google Chrome. So with that said, from myself, Matt. And from me, Dave. Cheerios. So for myself, Matt, and me, Dave, we hope that you found this video tutorial helpful. If you have, then let us know by leaving a thumbs up on this video below or subscribing to our YouTube channel. We believe to use Magento, you don't need a degree in nerd. And we've created you over 300 step-by-step -step video tutorials at understandinge.com to help you. In these tutorials, you'll learn how to use Magento with no prior knowledge. How to build a fully responsive Magento website for just $99, which is about 65 quid. How you can use Magento to sell on eBay and Amazon with M2E Pro. And you'll be joined by over 6,000 fellow business owners just like you. And the best part is, it's free to join. So for myself, Matt, and me, Dave. We'll see you there. Cheerios.